Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Parafills of Videos. Today we are back to Total War 3 Kingdoms with an advanced battle tutorial number 1. Unlike the 3 previous basic battle tutorials which dealt with how you actually fight a battle for which I will leave a link here on the right, these tutorials are going to be about specific battle tactics. And this first advanced battle tutorial is going to teach you how to route the enemy's army faster than you can say a shameful display. That's really my all-time favorite quote from Shogun 2. What's your favorite quote from the other Total War games? If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button below and leave a comment about what would you like to see more of on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. How do you go about routing the entire enemy's army before you can say shameful display? Well, I'm going to show you. First of all, you need to set up your own army in such a way that this is going to become possible. First of all, when you're setting up your frontline infantry units, you need to leave a little bit of room in between each one of those units. That is the space that the cavalry units are going to use to run through. And then of course you need those cavalry units. I would advise using heavy cavalry units, especially units that can form wedges. Spreading out the infantry units is to allow the enemy to form blobs. Those form when your infantry units are outnumbered and the enemy general attacks them with cellular units. By having them spread apart, this means that the enemy's units will blob about attacking from their spot where they are spread about, they are converging into a single spot into a single one of your units. If your units are spread about, this means that when they blob, they actually reduce the amount of space they used to take up and that leaves holes in their formation. These holes are where you are going to put your cavalry units, go about and beyond the front lines turn about and hit the enemy in the back. Infantry units at the front, they are exposed to the enemy bow and crossbow fire because your own bows are behind. But this is actually a bonus for this tactic, because by using the loose formation, you are increasing the surface area that your units are taking up. But once you go back to the close formation, you are once again taking up a very small amount of space on which the enemy units have to focus on. When you execute all of these elements, you are actually totally messing up the AI's pathfinding for his infantry units. They punch up into your infantry units, leaving their flanks and backs totally exposed for cavalry charges. This tactic will work regardless of the fact whether or not the AI is the attacker or the defender. The infantry will attack each other when in range. If you are the attacker, you just have to get close enough, if he is the attacker, you just have to wait. During the regular gameplay, because of the camera movement, you can't really see this happening so well, but I am going to show you in the replay in a much better camera angle. In case you have some amazing cool tactics that you want me to showcase, you can leave them in the comment section below. As the infantry units charge into each other, you can now clearly see the holes opening up and this is where you send your cavalry through. On one of these flanks, the enemy general used one of his infantry units to chase after my cavalry, leaving his flank totally exposed, which is why one of the cavalry units doesn't go through the middle, but rather goes to the flank. And you do need to be flexible in these situations because you never know when some unit will accidentally just see another unit closer than the front line and try to chase after it, like it did in this case. 
The reason why I changed manually the formation of the unit once it's past this gap and behind the enemy units is because the too deep horizontal formation is the most powerful cavalry formation when you are hitting into the backs of the enemy because you want as much of the mass of the cavalry hitting as much of the infantry units and considering the fact that there are three enemy units here lined up you want to hit all of them with one cavalry unit hitting them with massive morale penalties all at the same time. But you don't stop there. As soon as you hit and see the cavalry doing damage, you pull them back. You use the space that you have available between the enemy's archers and their infantry line to wind up another cavalry charge into the backs of the infantry. That is of course if they are not routing. If they are routing, you just continue and plow through the bow units or the crossbowmen or attack the enemy general. Look, the enemy run! Craven! Let's see that one more time from the other perspective. The enemy warriors are running! Ha! Show no mercy! No! Move out quickly! No. Go, go, go! No, no. Move, move! Look, the enemy run! Craven! Do not relent! An additional way you can spice up the opportunity like this to attack the enemy while they are bunched up is to use the gaps created by your infantry, push your cavalry, attack head on into the infantry because they are not braced, they are coming at you which means they can be destroyed by a cavalry charge. When you hit them you pull back, wait for them to engage your infantry and then once again use the holes to get behind them. You can watch this tactic in my last basic battle tutorial number 3. It will show you everything you need to learn about the infantry's brace ability and how to effectively attack infantry from the front without getting your cavalry destroyed. I did mention the wedge formation, I did not use it in this battle as it was unnecessary and it would have slowed down the cavalry units as they were getting into position behind the enemy lines. But if you decide to use those cavalry units in a frontal attack and then pull them back, this is where you're going to need the wedge formation. You're going to hit them at the front with the wedge formation while they're not braced, deal massive damage, pull back, get your infantry to attack them and then once those holes are once again free, you can use the cavalry to go back through those holes and attack the enemy infantry from the back or in the flanks. Preferably of course in the back where you can hit as many as 3 enemy units at the same time. All this put together can get pretty micro intensive, but of course if you are playing against the AI you can always use the pause button and issue orders. But I do advise it to everybody playing against the AI and trying to pull off these tactics to first try and use it with the pause button and then once you are more comfortable with the tactic and have it all nailed down, you can go ahead and pull off this tactic without using the pause button. And there is something I would like to ask you to help me with. I keep referring to this as the tactic, but if I do plan to have multiple advanced battle tutorials, each featuring a different tactic, each one will need a name, and I would like to ask you to offer up some names that I could use for this tactic. You can add your suggestions to the comment section below, and I will look through them, see which one I think fits this tactic the best, and I will add that name to the name of this video. I'm going to leave you here with this beautiful cinematic overview of the battlefield, Later on you can see the ending of the gameplay battle itself and at the end you can see the suggested videos. Thank you all for watching and please stay tuned for more. Destroy them! Strike! Team Polar! 
Bertans! Look, the enemy run! Craven! Kill them! Move out quickly! Do not relent! Watch this! Fight! To battle! Prepare! Militia! Move out quickly! Three grows ever closer. Stand ready. Quarrels. <laughs> 